Well, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul has been trying to audit the Federal Reserve for years now. Under President Obama, that was impossible, of course. Under an ordinary Republican administration, it would be pretty unlikely. But perhaps he can pull it off under President Trump, who has endorsed the idea. Senator Paul has introduced an audit the Fed bill into the Senate and is campaigning hard for the Republican majority to pass it while they can. Senator Paul joins us here in Washington. Senator, thanks for coming on. Absolutely. So why would we want to audit the Fed? Why is this of concern to the average person who's not a banker? I think an easier question is why wouldn't we want to audit the Fed? Right. I mean, it's about transparency. It's about knowing what your government does. The Constitution gives the power to Congress to mint and coin money. We sort of transferred that power to the Federal Reserve in 1913. But I think we ought to know what they're doing. The dollar's lost 96% of its purchasing power. What does that mean? Your prices have gone up every year. What was once worth a dollar... Uh, you know, is now takes twenty four dollars to buy what was once worth. And that's a dollar. the results of policies made at the Federal Reserve. Absolutely, they print up the money, but it's sort of a codependency, and this is a dirty little secret. You need to have a Federal Reserve if you're going to have a twenty trillion dollar debt. Why? They buy your debt, but they buy your debt by printing up money. So you can't have an enormous debt if you don't have a Federal Reserve printing up the money. But there are ramifications, and the ramifications are higher prices. So a lot of senior citizens will say, "Well, gosh, they tell me there's no." inflation and I don't get an increase in my social security check, but the prices really are going up for them at the grocery store. So it all depends on how you measure inflation. So there's been a massive amount of wealth floating around over the past 10 years, but famously most of it seems to have stuck to a relatively small number of people. It's one of the, the factors behind this election. I think most would agree. How much of that has to do with Fed policy. Well, the interesting thing is, you know, everybody, particularly Democrats, talk about income inequality. Yes. But I think the Federal Reserve has a lot to do with it because people get richer who already have money. So you and I might have to go out and earn it, or if you're a school teacher, you got to work to earn your money. But if you have a bunch of money and you park it at the Fed, they pay you to keep it there. So we actually use taxpayer money to pay people just to have it sitting at the Federal Reserve. Huh. What does the average person get out of the Fed, the Fed's policy? Well, you could Low say they get rate. to, uh, the government borrows an enormous amount of money so we get stuff we don't pay for but we also get something that we don't want and that is uh, the recessions and the depressions that come about there have been more recessions and depressions bad things since we got the fed than there were before the fed and they gave us the fed they said oh we're going to have less depression well the great depression came right after the fed and all of the downturns we've had have been with the fed in existence to be fair it's been a hundred years though i mean it's a long time well yeah but a lot of downturns have happened if you want to look at the most recent one the crisis where the banking system was teetering on the brink in right. 2008, that was caused because the Federal Reserve kept the interest rates low and people kept building houses. Instead, what should happen if a bunch of people are building houses and you and I go out and we're all buying houses, the price of money, the interest rate should go up and then the economy will slow down as the interest rates go. But what happens if the Federal Reserve keeps the interest rates low permanently? Then what happens is you get a boom, and people are building houses like crazy, but they build too many houses because no one told them to stop building. Why did the Federal Reserve keep the interest rates low? To pay for a $20 trillion debt. If interest rates were to go back where they were historically, 5% or even 7%, the government can't pay for their debt. So Janet Yellen, who runs the Fed, is against this. She said auditing the Surprise. Fed would politicize <laughs> monetary policy. Um, leaving aside the question of why that's bad, I mean, shouldn't elected right. representatives have a role in our right. economy? It seems pretty political to me already. Do you think it is? Well, it makes me so mad that I introduced further legislation to make it illegal for the Federal Reserve to lobby us. We pay them. We appointed them, and we're supposed to oversee them, and they're lobbying against transparency. They're lobbying against our oversight. It's insulting. The main lobby against auditing the Fed is the Fed. And who else? I mean, you don't have majority support in the Senate for this. Why would... Well, why actually, would... no, that's not true. We had 53 votes for it. We had really? 51 Republicans and two Democrats voted for it. Bernie Sanders voted for it. I, I know that. Amy Baldwin did, and 50, all, 51 out of 53 Republicans voted for What's the opposition this. to this rooted? I just want to give a fair hearing to their side. What's their argument? Um, some see that the Fed pays for this massive debt, and they love big government, and they know that we have to have a big debt to have big government, and they have to pay for it, so they don't want to mess with the Fed because right now it's able to accommodate this enormous debt. 
One of the reasons I want oversight, though, is that I think a lot of people get hurt in the downturn. So in 2008, when the housing market went bust, I blame that on the Federal Reserve. And we're right in the middle of another boom. Anybody seen the stock market lately? It is a boom, just like the real estate boom of 2008, and it will come to an end. I wish I knew exactly when, so I could give your viewers some investment advice, but it will come to an end. There will be a correction. We have a huge bubble in the, in the uh, stock market created by easy money, free money. Everybody's got money. Federal Reserve will hand you bouquets of money. But there will be repercussions, and that'll be the downturn. There will be a response or reaction to all of this extra money. So re really quick, we're almost out of time. Elliot Abrams, who served in the uh, last Bush administration, is under consideration to become Deputy Secretary of State. You wrote this. Crack the door to admit Elliot Abrams and the neocons will become scurrying in by the hundreds. Yeah, I, I think someone who was a never Trumper, Abrams was a never Trumper. He was disparaging and said to the president said things about the president that he would never vote for him. He said the chair that Washington and Lincoln sat in, that Trump wasn't fit to sit in it. Someone who was a never Trumper should never be in a Trump State Department. I mean, for goodness sakes. But he also represents things that Donald Trump doesn't. President Trump has been different than many. He said that nation building hasn't worked. When he said that, Elliot Abrams came forward and said, he's absolutely wrong. Nation building is what we need to do. Regime change, Iraq war. Elliot Abrams was one of the key architects of the Iraq war. Yes. We don't need people with the failed policies back in. Donald Trump does represent something new and different in foreign policy, sure. and I think a, a welcome relief from the neocons. So I hope he doesn't appoint somebody who doesn't really agree with him. I'm baffled by it. i got to be honest. Senator Paul, thanks a lot for Thank joining you. us. Appreciate it.